Okay, um, so for our next and also last speaker for the execution stream today, um, we have Claire Barrett, who is going to be joining us from the UK. Um, welcome, Claire. Thank you, Catherine, and um, what a delight to be joining you from early morning here uh, and for the end of your uh, conference. I hope you've had a fantastic time. Yeah, lovely. We all love early mornings. Um, mm -hmm. Claire is the Claire is the director at APIs First, and today she'll be discussing with us some of the aspects surrounding the role of an API product manager and some of the challenges associated with defining it and just sourcing someone to fill the role. So I'm really excited to hear more about it. Um, Claire, do you want to share your slides? There we are. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, is there any way you can uh, remove the taskbar from the top? I can't. I've been trying to do it, and I'm afraid uh, I'm, I can't seem to. Um, and I don't want to yep, waste any more time for the, uh, for the audience. So. Yep. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. So learning about API APIs as products can be a bit like uh, opening a Russian doll or peeling back an onion. Um, as you uh, learn and hear more about them, more layers are revealed. Uh, each time you think you've um, understood uh, more about it, you can kind of um, see more and more opportunities opening up. And today I'm going to try and peel back a layer of the onion on API product management specifically the role of the API product manager. Um, why is this important? Organizations are ramping up their API capabilities across the board. Uh, they're productizing um, more and more. They're looking to productize APIs. They're expecting to get more out of their API investment. And the uh, discipline of API product management is evolving and creating new API product manager roles. Um, you might be uh, perhaps um, uh, working with API product managers or looking to uh, um, invest in that capability. Um, you may uh, uh, need one or maybe even perhaps not know that you need one yet. Um, or you could be helping one be successful or maybe even aspiring to be one yourself. Um, uh, these would be some of the uh, things that I hope um, we'll be able to explore a bit further today. By way of introduction, I'm a director at APIs of Hose. My name is Claire Barrett. I uh, describe myself as someone who makes strategy happen and specifically API enabled strategy um, for usually mature organizations uh, that are um, typically undergoing digital transformation uh, of which APIs feature in, in a number of different ways and we help um, uh, in the enablement space in particular um, with uh, and work with um, API product managers or organizations looking to build API product capability. Um, I'm also proud to be a member of the API Collective and you can find out more about us at www.theapicollective.com. So I'm going to talk about um, some of the background to this discipline of API uh, product management, what it's about, where it's come from, um, and some of the uh, needs and the characteristics and expectations of an API product manager today, um, and uh, as we see uh, increasingly in the future. What are some of the expectations for them, um, and what are some of the considerations or environments that they can work in that will enable them to be successful? So, I'm going to take a bit of time to just have a bit of a history lesson. It's the, the classic uh, to understand where we are today. It's um, uh, good to go back to understand where we came from. So uh, I'm going to ask, uh, explore a bit of the, the DNA, um, the genealogy, if you like, of uh, API product management. And uh, it goes back um, uh, a long way, right, to the, to the 1930s. Um, uh, I, I recommend reading Martin Erickson, who works in Mind the Product, 
and uh, he has a, a great little article on the history and evolution of product management, um, tying it all together nicely. But some highlights are back in 1931, Procter and Gamble had probably the equivalent of the, the Jeff Bezos moment of 2002, um, uh, a gentleman called Neil McElroy, McElroy um, uh, wrote a 800 word memo to ask for uh, um, some extra people, some investment in resources, a couple of people to start building some capability around brand um, and more of a end to end type of capability, which developed over the years into um, what became for, for P&G, for Procter & Gamble, a hugely um, successful obviously global um, environment and uh, enterprise um, and complemented by thinking uh, at organisations such as um, Hewlett Packard, the Hewlett, the HP way, the Hewlett Packard way um, helped uh, that organisation um, uh, by understanding uh, product as being you know, the voice of the customer of uh, um, have, encouraging decisions to be made as close to the customer point. That fueled the growth of their organisation over 50 years um, uh, from 1943. Uh, meanwhile, in manufacturing sector, um, the, uh, the focus on building, um, uh, 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 expanding out um, uh, ways in which to manufacture more efficiently was being led by companies like Toyota uh, and their Kaizen and Lean practices. And the move towards manufacturing around uh, features that could be um, uh, bundled and offered and differentiate product, very much focusing on expanding the size of existing markets. Um, in the from the 1960s, the engineering, uh, large scale engineering um, uh, disciplines and uh, defence industries were getting good at the project management discipline of uh, structuring and managing uh, uh, complex numbers of subcontractors around costs, control, um, et cetera. And I've grouped here um, uh, what's been going on in, in other industries over, over these many years was um, big investment in, in process and automation and understanding how to do things more efficiently and at scale. So the global state supply chains um, that we that were um, automated and optimized through enterprise resource planning, tooling, and uh, and businesses, all of these things have come together to um, uh, uh, um, through the whole of the end of the last century, up to the um, enormous explosion from the technology industry at the start of. Uh, the turn and the start of this century. And um, these things have all formed part of what we now understand, if you like, as, as what we tend to call product management, particularly, um, I'm, I'm labeling them here as tech products, but the, um, uh, the, the building out an understanding of practices and principles around uh, deep um, understanding of customer, around user experience, design thinking, uh, not just the agile uh, um, uh, ways of working in manifesto, but the the engineering practices, the disciplines behind that, have all been um, very much uh, uh, spearheaded and exploited by the technology industry, um, as uh, they've been able to then um, uh, develop platforms and dominate and create these create and dominate these these um, uh, significant ecosystems. Um, uh, the process automation space has been able to use technology to digitize at scale. And uh, so this all creates an environment in which API products um, have, uh, um, uh, um, have been developed. So you can actually look at API product management and you can see its heritage in um, uh, aspects of all of these um, other elements that have grown and evolved over time. Um, what's also interesting in this space is those tech practices have, are um, being now widely adopted in other industries with their own flavors. But these different sectors are um, increasingly converging in uh, the types of practices and um, things that they're doing. So you'll 
and, um, uh, and this has been accelerated even further through the pandemic, that there's um, uh, more and more of a mindset towards product across these industries. Um, there is There are different flavors, um, but increasingly the types of way that people are investing in things like APIs and API enablement um, is more consistent. And we see this with the organizations that they're working with. They're facing many of the same problems about um, trying to uh, scale, uh, uh, implement and execute platforms, um, uh, execute um, faster decision making, enable um, uh, uh, APIs ac ac across and, and within and around in many different situations. For the API product management capability itself, um, the, uh, uh, the Gartner in Canada uh, did a survey three years ago um, among their CIO uh, leadership um, uh, connections and, and community. And a the role of the API product manager was identified as one of the top four um, uh, most in demand um, IT roles that uh, organizations could see that would enable them, those uh, organizations to um, uh, participate in the, in the broader business ecosystem. Um, notably, the gray bar at the bottom there, the 42% um, of uh, um, uh, was seen as um, was reflecting those organizations that were higher top performing businesses. So the leading companies are understanding uh, that this discipline is um, uh, both needed and is uh, increasingly high demand to fill. So, so what is the role? What does it look like? Um, I'm leaning here on uh, Zulin and Booz's uh, book of um, uh, they first uh, produced in 2017 uh, that defines um, three different aspects of where APIs play uh, in enabling uh, digitization for uh, solutions to be able to be pulled together from APIs that will um, automate and digitalize uh, uh, business processes, customer experiences, um, journeys, etc. Um, but that it's API products that underpin uh, um, the broader scale digital transformation that um, organizations are looking at. I'll try and bring that to life with uh, an example here of, um, uh, this is a, 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 a fictional example, but um, thinking of, uh, from the perspective of a company here that maybe a high volume specialist printer. So um, up here on the left, so an organization that has seen um, a massive increase in the needs for printing COVID signage uh, for its customer base that include um, a, a, a range of, a, um, a group of uh, small independent grocery stores. Um, those stores use a, um, uh, an ordering software solution um, to uh, create orders for printing. And they also have uh, solutions around um, their uh, um, uh, uh, graphic design. And um, because the printer has realized that with um, a massive um, regular changes coming about from the healthcare uh, regulations and um, details of uh, what, what are the latest distancing uh, mechanisms, that they've been able to API-fy some of those regulation rules and um, uh, build them into um, uh, the uh, mechanism for uh, um, uh, visualizing that um, and maintaining it dynamically in signage design and, and in ordering. Um, so the, the problem space is uh, that the rules are rapidly changing, that there's lots of to and fro and uh, potential wastage in the timing between ordering uh, um, new, new, print, new printing and um, managing the change. And uh, um, uh, this productized view that the printing company is taking of its APIs is to look at how the ordering software ordering software can actually embed that in their um, capability to avoid them having to um, build things in-house. So this is this is just kind of highlighting the, um, the this idea of an ecosystem beyond the existing um, uh, journeys that that customer might might have, 
and it comes to life with uh, the um, the role and the question of what what is a, a product manager or specifically an API product manager. And if we go back to um, uh, uh, Silicon Valley again, we can um, uh, uh, look to a McKinsey article um, of 2007 who um, defined, uh, uh, went to interview and talk with many technology company leaders on what were the ingredients of uh, success at their organizations and what did product management look like for them in a digital world. And they described the um, uh, Silicon Valley product manager as um, uh, the, the, the glue across um, uh, all of the functions that would have, you know, that, that whether it's engineering, design, success, sales, customer, um, operations, finance, legal, all of those pieces were brought together under the responsibility of a inverted commas product manager who not only decides what gets built, but also every aspect of how that build happens. And they um, uh, uh, called out also three different flavors of product manager that the technology um, uh, communities were, were seeing and that was successful. Um, this was uh, um, across, uh, um, uh, they gave the example of technologists who were deeply um, uh, looking at products, uh, aka um, AWS or VMware, where um, a deep understanding of the technical integration um, and opportunities within those ecosystems needed a different perspective than uh, a more customer, um, consumer, AI-oriented, um, user delight uh, view, focus for this generalist style, um, or a more business-oriented uh, um, product manager that was um, understanding more about the uh, requirements of their business customers and the processes and so on that they needed. Now, this was four years ago already, and um, uh, uh, I believe this has been extended and it's, it forms a basis for uh, what API product management's about, but it really focuses here on the um, on this little white um, person uh, who um, uh, perhaps has a different kind of um, focus and heritage and requirement than an API product management. And to me, the the uh, the, the magic or the secret sauce, if you like, for um, uh, the difference between um, a, a product manager uh, looking after a, uh, um, a, uh, a a software solution of, of features versus someone um, looking beyond and extending out into the ecosystem is that uh, the, um, uh, the, the 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 traditional system product uh, solution product owner is continuously looking at ways of um, well through deeply understanding the customer but expanding on um, and automating and digitizing and making current processes more efficient. So give the example back to the printing piece. The ordering software company would have product managers. Um, looking at ways in which their store customers and others would be able to um, automate process more quickly. It's the API product manager at the printer who's identified the opportunity that that ordering software company is a potential customer and particularly its developers may be able to get a better experience um, through uh, um, saving time by using this regulation API. And through that, the printer themselves getting value from perhaps not even just monetizing it, but the fact that they will get less um, uh, to and fro as uh, um, their store manager, store customers change their requirements through the software that they're using. So this, um, uh, uh, this ecosystem exposure, as you can see just from that little printing example, the number of different places where um, uh, this change is happening is creating um, uh, a burgeoning landscape of API related roles. And we've been talking about product management as 
um, uh, roles that are facing out into um, that, in, that are include or are, um, uh, uh, maybe within the team um, um, uh, working with an API product manager, um, focused on maybe external developer relations, uh, content management, the uh, the API um, portal design for either um, in those examples the developer at the order company or even the um, the decision maker to uh, procure it if it's uh, um, a monetized API. Um, uh, sitting alongside and and working with this growing uh, a number of API engineering and API enablement roles. So what are some of the expected uh, uh, skill sets um, that we might uh, be looking for for an API product manager? Well, it's worth going back to the genealogy. Um, clearly, an API product manager would expect to have, um, if not uh, heritage in all of these, uh, or at least understand, but but certainly an appreciation and would be um, needing to use and call on understanding of these practices and processes, obviously within the industry sector that they're in, but increasingly with this convergence across industry sector, they can um, uh, look to apply these disciplines and this knowledge um, from one sector to another. What's more important is that um, they have this, uh, this set of um, understandings, uh, if you like. But there's a bunch of um, core traits or styles of uh, ways of working that separate, that differentiate the, the good from the great, if you like, um, when it comes to an API product manager. Um, they are really good at communicating. Uh, they need to be able to um, uh, understand the intent and uh, the uh, opportunities of the strategy for their organization, but be able to spot and exploit opportunities uh, um, that bring that strategic intent to, to life, but potentially with a lot of low level detail. So go back to the printing example, the understanding of how the ordering processing system works, understanding the type of data that the printing organization has and has access to um, the uh, uh, the, the data that it can use and leverage from its own relationships. All of these types of things require a low level of understanding of detail, um, but the ability to be able to then extrapolate it back up and explain that. Um, clearly, technical depth and credibility is important. Um, comfort with ambiguity and uh, this ability to operate across and beyond uh, the, current, the current functional teams. Um, we see this, uh, all the API product managers I speak to talk about um, how important it is to be able to operate and uh, work at a strategic level, as well as being able to orchestrate um, many different parts of the organization to pull together solutions um, and products uh, that, are, that are going to be meaningful, um, which often require a lot of change for the business. Um, the product management mantra of loving the problem, not the solution, comes to life really strongly in the API product management space. And this is, again, back to this subtle difference of it may not be the, the problem of, for example, today's customer's experience being reimagined, which might be more of a digitization focus, but the, the problem of um, uh, uh, um, helping solve sometimes the customer's, customer's, customer's problem. Um, and having a real comfort with talking with customers and the customer's customers, but, um, in, customers in order to be able to understand their customer proposition to enable the tech things that they are doing with technology that can make their customers' businesses happy. So this, this is something that... Um, uh, uh, it seems to, for me, comes through very strongly in the ways that people work. Um, and uh, obviously a lot of this is about the actual developer's experience, so deeply connecting with the, um, uh, the software community. I'd argue too that there is um, time, that they spend a lot of time on what matters in the long term. They're solving, um, uh, they're looking a lot more about ensuring others getting value than perhaps solving today's problems and justifying investment needs. Um, 
I describe that as uh, the way that they're working is less about um, creating a kind of internal competition for resources or uh, um, attention from stakeholders to invest and more, um, so less kind of tug of war and uh, a bit more meerkat really um, looking for connection uh, within the organization itself into the community of uh, developers, other, org other, um, other product um, thinkers uh, that they can pick up more of the global trends and insights um, tooling practices that are that are going on elsewhere. Um, so quickly going to finish up with um, uh, what are some of the uh, things that need to um, be uh, set up for an API product manager to be successful. Um, one of the things is perhaps to uh, consider where they have come from, where their orientation and strength is. So an API product manager or an API product team, perhaps, with um, a lot of background and solid customer data analytics insight um, uh, 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 and UX design style of thinking um, uh, can uh, potentially mean that they may need support uh, from some of the uh, um, other disciplines that will bring some of the technical rounding out uh, and this um, looking at the technical problem solution. Um, uh, if the um, API product team is um, uh, perhaps um, overweight with expertise in large scale process automation project, this could be really relevant if the API productizing opportunities are um, simplifying a lot of complexity in today's um, environments. Um, uh, however, uh, um, if there are gaps in um, some of those other core capabilities, there's a risk that um, uh, uh, some of the ways of working that, that are um, more around agile, uh, agile thinking and engineering may not uh, be practiced. So a couple of key um, lessons would be um, avoiding creating roles in the API product management space that come from today. Uh, uh, so don't just kind of replace today's reality into a new world. Um, recognize there'll probably be new operating models around it. It will probably require funding differently. So that mini CEO uh, type of mindset um, lends towards API products as being long running, funded more like a business. But um, the value and the outcomes uh, will need to be more important initially than perhaps some of the delivery because there's time required for learning. This is a new way of, of thinking and working. So in summary, uh, um, API product managers role is, is only, there will only be more of them and they're getting bigger. Um, they may look and sound like other roles, but do understand that they're different and get started small to get some traction. If you'd like to know more, um, uh, I'm contactable on LinkedIn or at apisfirst.com or via the collective. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I think you're on mute. I am too. I've been saying that to other people all day and now it's me. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you for a very insightful talk into um, the skills needed for API product management. Um, I can I love seeing the history of just like the API management role growing and evolving. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time left for questions, but I just wanted to thank you for coming to API Days Australia and speaking. Thank you very much for having me, Catherine. It's an absolute delight to be here and uh, um, uh, congratulations to you all for putting on a wonderful conference. Thank you so much. Thank you.